Morning, Shula. Guten Morgen. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about the accusative personal pronouns. And for those of you who are actually in my classes, uh, you already have these worksheets. For those of you who are watching but are not part of my actual physical classes, uh, you can find the links in the description where you can find all of that stuff. So yeah, uh, I'm going to switch over to my slideshow here and uh, get this thing underway. So, yeah. First things first uh, is just a quick explanation of what the uh, personal pronouns are in German. And so we have a list of them here in English and in German with the nominative and accusative cases right next to each other. So there's uh, those two things next to each other, but uh, that's not all that helpful. So we're just going to move on to the next slide. Uh, after that, we have some examples here. These examples are going to uh, kind of remind you what these pronouns actually do. For those of you who are unaware, uh, personal pronouns replace nouns. That's kind of their job. That's what pronouns do. Uh, personal pronouns are usually used to uh, make things less dull, less repetitive, try and get rid of some of those uh, sentences where it's the same thing over and over again. So. This uh, first example, for instance, it says, Siehst du den Mann? Do you see the man? And you say, Ja, ich sehe ihn. Yes, I see him. And rather than saying uh, the man over and over again, Yes, I see the man, you could say, Yes, I see him, which uh, makes things a little bit more conversational. So uh, you may notice that we have here den Mann, which might, uh, matches the last letter of the word ihn, so again, make sure that you're paying attention to the gender of the noun, because that will affect things. Das Buch in the second example is uh, going to end with an S there for das, and therefore our pronoun also ends with an S, which is S. Uh, so, hast du das Buch? Do you have the book? Ja, ich habe es. Yes, I have it. So, when we're using those pronouns, we, uh, we switch them out to make sure that the gender of the article matches. Uh, in the next two uh, examples, though, we don't have that op option, and that's because we're using mich, which is me, and therefore we use here mich, kennst du mich, do you know me, and then we answer with ja, ich kenne dich, yes, I know you. Then we have a few minor reminders in here where it's telling you to uh, make sure that you remember that personal pronouns uh, are also able to replace things like uh, possessive words and articles and that kind of thing. Just a quick reminder there. And then we get into some actual exercises where we have to do stuff. This first one here is uh, where you have to circle whether the pronoun that is underlined, not just any random pronoun in the sentence, like the second one has do and z, we're supposed to uh, replace the or find out if the pronoun z is a nominative or accusative thing. So uh, each one has one underlined and we have to figure out which one, uh, which case that is. So the first one, it says Michael fragt ihn. Michael asks him. One major thing here is that ihn is always, without exception, going to be accusative. It cannot be anything else other than that. So, in this one we have here the accusative case. Michael fragt ihn. Michael asks him. That's accusative because he's the one being asked. That makes him the direct object. In the second one, we have kennst du sie, do you know her? Z, of course, here is being used in the accusative case. This is because the accusative case uh, is used with direct object. Du is the subject of the sentence, which makes Z the one being known, so the one being the direct object in that sentence. This one is also helpful because du is always the subject, so we have to, of course, have uh, all of the uh, the forms whenever you have uh, do in the sentence, it has to be the subject. It's never going to be anything other than the subject. So do is, of course, our subject. Z is our direct object. Z hat s. She has it. Z hat s. We have uh, she has it as our sentence here. Uh, that one, of course, is going to be nominative because she is the one that has something. Now, 
the one thing that I have here that uh, is a little bit odd is that the uh, the pronouns themselves don't change for Z or S in the uh, nominative and accusative cases. They're the same for Z and S. They are always going to be Z and S. That Z is the subject, which is nominative. Number four, uh, number four on the list, we have er hat Z gern. Z is the subject, uh, no, <laughs> sorry, uh, er is the subject of that sentence because he is the one that likes her. We can tell that because er is always used as a subject. It can't be anything other than that. That means that the other thing in the sentence, the Z here, is accusative. It's the direct object of the sentence. She is the one being liked, and that means that it's he likes her. Er hat sie gern. Wer spielt es in Nummer 5? Wer is always the subject. That's kind of the whole point of using wer is because it's used in the nominative case. So we have to look at our verb here, which is spielt, which tells us that we have a direct object. It has to have uh, something that is being played. In this case, we have s, which is it. So obviously our direct object is accusative. That's s, and so that one's accusative. In Nummer 6, we have wann fängt s an? When does it start? Uh, this one, we don't have anything in the sentence that can be the subject except for S. S, of course, has to be in the nominative case then, and so uh, that has to be the only thing in the sentence that is the subject. It has to be nominative. Uh, there's no other real option in that sentence. Wo finde ich ihn in Nummer, uh, Nummer sieben? Here we have ich, which is the subject of the sentence. Uh, we can tell this for a couple of different ways. First of all, e at the end of the verb indicates that ich is our subject, but also ich is always the subject. It can't be anything other than the subject, and so of course we have to have here the uh, accusative case here being used for ihn. Another tip is that ihn is always used as the accusative case, so we have to be using here the accusative ihn for the accusative masculine pronoun. Sieht er sie? Er is again always nominative. There cannot be another way to use er in any sentence. It has to be nominative every single time. Uh, the Z in this sentence isn't really relevant for our answer, but it is accusative in case any of you were wondering about that. All right, moving on to section B, we have uh, slightly different instructions. This time we are given some random sentence and we are supposed to replace whatever the noun is that they want, uh, replace that with a pronoun of some sort. And so we have here uh, various sentences and uh, we have to figure out the pronouns. So first one on the list, wir hören das Konzert. We are hearing the concert and we want to say we hear it. So wir hören and then whatever pronoun we would use. So we look at the gender of the word concert, which tells us this is a neuter noun. Neuter nouns need neuter pronouns, and the only neuter pronoun is, uh, of course, s. S has to be the neuter pronoun because it's literally the only one. Ich sehe den Lehrer, I see the teacher. This one says den Lehrer, which indicates this is masculine and accusative. So this masculine accusative form here, we have to use the masculine accusative pronoun, which is ihn. Notice that the last letter of both das and s and den and ihn, those two last letters match. So of course that is uh, an n at the end of ihn for the masculine accusative for den, and then of course s for uh, the last letter of das and s. So that's an extra little uh, helpful thing about these pronouns, is that they always uh, match the article that is needed. Speaking of which, in the next one it says, Besucht ihr die Familie? Are you visiting the family? And we're going to say, are you visiting it? Which doesn't really seem to fit in this. We would probably say them in English, uh, but this is going to be the singular pronoun in German, which is sie. Z, of course, is used for the nominative and accusative case. This one happens to be in the accusative case, so we have here Z as the pronoun for die Familie. Are you visiting them or are you visiting it? Up next we have Ich frage die Lehrerin. I am asking the teacher. And since it's die Lehrerin, we have to have the female pronoun to replace it, which is sie, of course. 
So, ich frage sie. I ask her. Up next in Nummer 5, we have Ich rufe die Kinder an. I am, uh, I am calling the children. And so we're going to say, I'm calling them. And this pronoun, of course, has to match the article again. The last letter being an E. The only pronoun that does that, Z. So this one is the uh, they plural form, but in accusative, in English, we say them instead. So, ich, ich rufe sie an. I am calling them. In Nummer 6, ich höre den Engländer. Engländer is a masculine person from England, and so we say den Engländer. That one is accusative. We can tell so by the uh, article den. And because we have the article den, we have to use the pronoun that matches ihn. Ich höre ihn. Up next, we have Nummer 7. Er hat ein Buch. He has a book. A book doesn't actually show us the uh, gender of the noun based on ein. So we can't go off of the last letter of whatever that is because it's obviously not ihn. Um, but in this case, we have ein Buch. It's being used as the direct object of the sentence, which makes it accusative. And the only ein word that does not have an ending in the accusative case, uh, whether that be an e or an en, the only one that is just empty, just as ein, in the accusative is neuter, which means that we need a neuter pronoun here, which is, of course, s. Next up, hast du den Stift? Do you have the pencil or pen? whatever writing utensil. Uh, in this case, we have den Stift, which very, uh, very clearly indicates the accusative masculine form, and so we use the accusative masculine pronoun, ihn. Looks like the uh, boys in the class are having lots of fun with the fact that they have a uh, chat to chat in. So, how's it going, boys? Good to see you there, Lucas and Derek and Atticus and all you other kids in there. Uh, yeah. Nice to see you again, even though we're not seeing each other again. So there's your hello for those of you who are waiting on me to be like, hi. All right, in section C, we have uh, more pronoun stuff. This one's slightly less easy than the previous ones because now we have to have here uh, some sort of an... Uh, a little bit of a thought process here because instead of just putting one sentence into the uh, pronoun form, we are actually going to answer the questions that are, we are given. And uh, so, yeah, we have here, Seht ihr den Fernseher? Do you see the television? And we're supposed to answer, yes, we see it. Now, confusingly enough, if you are talking about uh, it, uh, in German, we have to worry about whether that it is masculine, feminine, or neuter. In uh, English, we really don't have that. We just have it, and it is always it. Uh, so in this case, we have here uh, den Fernseher, which tells us that this is a masculine pronoun, and a masculine pronoun needs to be ihn in the accusative. Via are our subject in that sentence, and then after that, uh, it's just the uh, direct object, so via subject. In direct object. In Nummer 2, we have Fragst du deinen Freund? Do you, uh, are you asking your friend? And you're saying, yes, I would like to ask him. And since him is, of course, a masculine noun, we have to use the masculine pronoun. We use ihn. Nummer 3. We have uh, versteht ihr die Hausaufgaben? Do you have? Uh, do you understand the homework? Nein, wir verstehen blank nicht. Uh, Hausaufgaben is even labeled for you. It says it is plural, and since it's plural, it has to use the plural pronoun Z. It's the only one pronoun that we have that is the plural they form. A little prematurely clicking the next button, but that's fine. Wo ist die Lehrerin? Where is the teacher? Dort ist sie. She is there. Uh, in this one, we have the subject of the sentence being the teacher. Uh, we say here she, and so dort ist sie. Sie doesn't change between nominative and accusative, so it really doesn't make much of a, a difference for which case it is. It happens to be nominative in case any of you are curious. Thank you, Lucas, again for the uh, 
the super chat there. Uh, you really don't need to be spending any money on this. I am actually getting paid for my real job. So uh, yeah, I don't really need your uh, tips in this particular one, but uh, I will take any money that I can get because, you know, I teach for a living. So uh, there's not a whole lot of money coming in, even when I am getting paid for my normal job. Uh, but thank you anyway, Lucas. Uh, it is appreciated. In section D, here we have in parentheses something that we are supposed to replace with the uh, German version of the same pronoun. So we now have here U formal. The only U formal that you know is Z. That makes it pretty straightforward, pretty easy to understand. It has to, of course, be Z. Kann ich Sie etwas fragen, Herr Peters? Uh, can I ask you something, Mr. Peters? In this case, we have Z, U formal, so that is Z with a capital S. Wir sehen her im Klassenzimmer. Her in German is also Z, so we still use that same Z form here. This one is lowercase, though, because it, of course, means her. This is the same form that we have for uh, she, but now in the accusative case, in English, we say her. So, wir sehen Z im Klassenzimmer. We see her in the classroom. In Nummer 3, we have kennt ihr him nicht? So him in German is always ihn in the accusative case. So since this worksheet is about the accusative case, we really don't have to put too much thought into it, but we just know that it's ihn. This is not always going to work for you, though, because eventually you will learn the dative case, and the dative case also has a him, and that him is not ihn. So uh, kennt ihr ihn nicht? Don't you know him? Him, in this case, is the thing that is being verbed. It's the direct object of the sentence. And so, of course, we have ihn. Nummer vier. Warum könnt ihr mi nicht verstehen? At this point in your German learning careers, the only me you know is mich. There is, of course, mia in the dative case, but we haven't gotten there yet, so we can just assume that we have the accusative. Uh, if you need the actual reasoning behind it, though, we have the verb verstehen, which is to understand. And so, of course, the direct object there is not dative. Uh, it is, of course, accusative, so me has to be the accusative one here. That is, warum könnt ihr mich nicht verstehen? Why can't you understand me? Next up, we have three more questions that happen to be on the next page there. Uh, so we have more. Uh, for those of you who are doing this on ho uh, at home, there uh, there may not be any of your uh, worksheets that have uh, five, six, and seven on them, and that's because it was at the end of uh, the top of another page, and I just decided not to give you that. So. Uh, for my actual students, you don't have a copy of this. If you want a copy of it, there are links in the description where you can download your own copy of the worksheet. So, Nummer 5. Fragen Sie us, bitte. Us in German is always uns. There are no exceptions to that. If you try and say us in German, it is uns every single time. So, Fragen Sie uns, bitte, which is please ask us. Us in this case is being used as the accusative object, and so, of course, we have uns. Ich kann you schon sehen. This time we didn't actually get an explanation of which you to use, and so we have to use here the you that we figure out based on some logic. Uh, the logic in this particular one is that Jörg is the person that we are talking to, and since we uh, are talking directly to uh, Jörg, we have, of course, the du form, ich kann dich, in the accusative, sehen. I in the subject of the sentence, the one that is being seen or the one seeing something, is of course here the accusative and therefore direct object, dich. Last one on this page, sie besucht you in the uh, plural form, Petra und Anna, uh, Andrea. Since we're talking directly to Petra und Andrea, they are plural. We're going to use the ear form with them, but because we have here the accusative object, the direct object, we have to use euch. Sie besucht euch bald. Uh, she is visiting you all soon.
All right, next up we have uh, a couple of pronoun charts, and in case you couldn't copy it from the previous page where we had this already, uh, then we have uh, all of these, and I'm just going to click on through them really quickly because I don't really see the point in uh, dwelling too much on this particular part of this worksheet, but uh, in case you need the pronoun chart, it uh, looks something like this for the singular forms. Those uh, singular forms there are, of course, the uh, I, you, he, she, it forms. That would be do in the nominative and dich in the accusative for you. He is er in the nominative and ihn, which is him in German for the accusative. Uh, Z stays Z and S stays S for both nominative and accusative. So no changes there. One too many. There we go. Uh, so this other half of it, this would be the plural forms. That would be via for we and uns for the accusative form for us. You all is, of course, ihr, euch in the accusative, and the other two z's just stay z for that particular one. Next up, we have a mixture of pronouns, and we have uh, things in parentheses. These are usually the parts where my students start to struggle a little bit uh, because we have a few things in there that aren't necessarily uh, the most straightforward answers. But first one up here is incredibly straightforward. It just says I in parentheses. The only word for I in German is ich, and so that has to be our answer. Uh, it also tells us here that it says Liebe. Liebe is, of course, the ich form of the verb, which means that we still again have ich as our subject. Now we get to the part where it says it, though, and we have to read back to our sentence where it says Ich liebe meine Katze. I love my cat. In that sentence, my cat is the, uh, the thing that we are about to say it as the uh, pronoun. So it is actually referring back to a female noun. That would be die Katze, meine Katze. And so when we use this as a pronoun, we have to use Z. Then we get to the last one, which is me. And up until this point, we have only learned the one uh, me form, and that is mich. Mich in the accusative case, sie liebt mich, she loves me. So that is, of course, ich liebe meine Katze, I love my cat, und sie liebt mich, and she loves me. Meine Tante wohnt in Milwaukee. My aunt lives in Milwaukee. Ich besuche her, Morgan. Morgan, uh, not Morgan, Morgan. Uh, her in the accusative case is Z, just as it is in the nominative case, so nothing really changes there. Uh, if you know that the word her in German is Z, there it is. Uh, ich besuche Z, I am visiting her, that's accusative, so in English we have to change from uh, nominative to accusative. We just don't really know that that's the name of it. Nummer drei. Mein Freund und ich gehen oft zusammen ins Kino. My friend and I often go to the movie theater together. Okay, aber he geht nie allein. He in German is always going to be er, otherwise it becomes him in English, and ihn or ihm in the uh, German version. So er geht nie allein. He never goes alone. Kennen Sie meinen Bruder? Do you know my brother? Nein, ich kenne him nicht. No, I know him not. Or no, I don't know him. In this one, again, we have him. Him is uh, ihm in the accusative, so the direct object in this one. I know him. I don't know him uh, more precisely. Ich kenne ihn nicht. Nein, Petra, es tut mir leid. No, Petra, uh, I'm sorry. Ich kann you morgen nicht anrufen. You in this sentence, we have to figure out which you it is. And so we look back at uh, our previous sentence where we were addressing Petra. And uh, since that's a singular individual and we are using uh, kind of a casual address with them, we of course use here the do form. But since ich is our subject and we have a direct object, that direct object being you, we use the accusative form dich. Ich kann dich nicht anrufen. I cannot call you. Wie findest du meine, uh, meine zwei neuen Stühle? How do you find my two new chairs? In other words, what do you think of my two new chairs? 
Ich finde them dumm. I find them dumb. Uh, in this case, we have Z again, which is them in German. Uh, that works for both nominative they and the accusative them. I find them. That's our direct object in the sentence. Nummer sieben. Siehst du das Haus da? Do you see the house there? Wie findest du it? How do you find it? What do you think of it? Uh, in this case, the it is referring back to the house in the previous sentence, uh, which is, do you see the house over there? What do you think of it? So we have here the uh, it form that goes with the house, which is a neuter noun. So the neuter pronoun s is the option here. Next up in Nummer 8, we have Wo ist mein Stift? Where is my pencil? Ach, da ist it. It, again, we have to fi uh, figure out exactly which it we're using. So we go back to the noun that we're talking about, which in this case is a Stift. Stift is a masculine noun, so we need the masculine it. The masculine form here is uh, the nominative case because it's the subject of the sentence. Da ist es, there it is. It is the thing that is in this sentence, uh, which is a lot of is's in the English, but uh, we use here er, er in German. Nummer 9. Thomas und Helena. Uh, wann kommt y'all? So, you plural. This one is uh, pretty easy to figure out because the only you form that can take a T at the end uh, without being an ST is ia. So this is our subject of the sentence. Uh, when are you all coming? So Thomas und Helena. Yeah, no, I don't actually read the uh, the chats. Thank you, Castle Crusher seventy one. <laughs> like how he listens in class but doesn't input. Yes, I pay attention in class. I just don't care that you're talking. Next up, no one's saying kennst and then a blank space. We know that our subject here has to be do because the verb ends in st. So, of course, we have do in that sentence. Kennst du meine Schwester? Do you know my sister? She in German, of course, is z. So we have z heist Lisa. Uh, Castle Crusher 71. Yes, you will eventually have uh, some things that you need to do. Um, for online assignments and you will have to turn some stuff in via Schoology uh, but for right now I haven't actually posted any of those assignments but uh, I will put in some of that stuff soon. Uh, volume is low according to uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, is that the same for everybody because uh, I don't know I haven't heard anybody complaining about that yet but go ahead and leave it in the chat there if you think my volume needs to be turned up I could turn it up a little bit I do have uh, an adjustment for that. Yes, this is your homework for today. This is your live lesson for the day. Um, I was hoping to do this during class, but obviously that's not an option. So uh, here we are sitting in front of a computer screen instead. Oh, it's Crasher, not Crusher. Castle Crasher. Sure, why not? All right, so sound seems to be okay for everybody except for one person. All right, cool. Uh, ach, der Computer ist viel zu teuer. Oh, the computer is far too expensive. Ich kaufe it nicht. Again, here in this case, we have to wor uh, work with uh, it, and so we have to figure out to what uh, is it referring. In this case, we have der Computer. Since der Computer would change between nominative and accusative, between er and ihn for our pronoun, we have to figure out is this uh, nominative or accusative. So the accusative case here is uh, ihn, the uh, accusative pronoun for masculine things. Ich kaufe ihn, I am buying it. It is the thing being purchased in this sentence. Uh, Ella, no, we are not doing this every day. Uh, I don't think I could actually carve out an hour out of my day every day, uh, but I will try and do a few of these uh, live streams. I did tell you that I would do at least the accusative pronouns one and the uh, stem changing verbs pronoun thing that I hadn't had before. 
uh, Jonah, no, I already took grades for these things. These are just for your own knowledge so that you know what's going on. Um, so I already went through on uh, Monday. Yeah, I went through on Monday and uh, checked everybody's work to make sure that you actually completed it. And uh, that's it. So you don't have to worry about taking pictures of this and posting it online later on. Wie findest du meinen neuen Schreibtisch? What do you think of my new desk? Ich finde it zu modern. And again, we're going to have to refer back to what is this it? This it is the desk, the Schreibtisch in that sentence. So, of course, we're using here ihn. Ich finde ihn zu modern. I find it too modern. This is accusative and it's masculine, referring back to that desk in the previous sentence. Möchtet. For those of you who uh, haven't already seen this, möchtet is the ear form of the verb, which means this clearly is going to have to be ihr for our answer. In the second half of this, we have it, which is referring back to the auto in the previous uh, sentence. So auto being a neuter noun, we know it has to be s. Es fährt schnell und ist nicht teuer. So it is fast and is not uh, expensive. In Nummer 14, ich habe sieben, uh, sieben Geschwister. I have seven siblings. They wohnen alle zu Hause. The only they form we have is Z. It has to be that. Nummer 15, Martin liebst blank, uh, blank, nicht mehr. You and me. Liebst has the ST at the end, so the U we have to use, of course, is du. And then after that we have me, which again, the only me that we have learned at this point is mich, but this is the accusative case, so we have here mich as opposed to mia for any of you who are aware of that case. We in German is always via, and therefore we don't have to worry about too much thought process into that one. It uh, also shows us via the conjugation that it is either Z or via. So, wir gehen nie aus, we never go out. Martin, liebst du mich nicht mehr? Martin, don't you love me anymore? We never go out. Oh, you poor thing. Nummer 16. Wie findest du meine neue Tasche? What do you think of my new bag? Ich finde it sehr schön. It is now referring back to the Tasche, Tasche being a feminine noun, and therefore we have to use here Z for the feminine for, uh, for the feminine pronoun. Uh, next up, Herr Winkler, kennen you formal schon meinen Bruder Alex? So, Mr. Winkler, do you know my brother Alex already? You formal is always Z, and so we have that right there. Uh, no real ambiguity here. We're talking directly to Mr. Winkler, and uh, we're addressing him with you, so obviously that one has to be Z. Last one on this page. Mein Freund und ich sind sehr traurig. My friend and I are very uh, sad. Ihr besucht us nie. Us in German is always uns. No changes needed there. Uh, other than just knowing that it is uns all of the time. Next up we have two stories. This story is uh, going to remind you that there are also dare words and ein words and such. Uh, so we have here uh, all of these wonderful blank spaces and things in parentheses, and we're supposed to uh, fill in the rest of the stuff. So, start off with, Ich gehe spazieren. I am going for a walk. After that, Ich sehe a dog. I, uh, a Hund. So, Hund, if you didn't know already, it says in parentheses uh, it's masculine, and so uh, it has to be here a masculine uh, version of A. Uh, that would be an ein word for those of you who don't remember. And ich being the subject, that makes the dog the direct object, and therefore einen Hund. I see a dog, ich sehe einen Hund. He in German is still er, no matter how we use it. So er ist klein und schmutzig. He is small and dirty. 
Ich nehme him nach Hause. I take him home. Since I am the one taking something and the him is being taken, that makes that him accusative and therefore ihn. Und wasche, again him, it's still the same him as before and it's still being uh, the direct object, it's still being accusative, so we have here ihn in that blank as well. Und wasche ihn, and I wash him. Ich gebe dem Hund einen Namen. Uh, I give the dog a name, Max. Max hat einen großen Hunger. Max has a large hunger. In other words, he is really hungry. Uh, Max sieht my shoe. Max sieht mein shoe. So we have to have an ending on mine. Uh, in this case, it's a masculine one. Ma Max is the one that is seeing something. And the something that he sees is meinen, hund, uh, meinen shoe, which is accusative case. Er sprengt und frisst it. It is now referring back to the shoe in the previous sentence, which is still a masculine noun. It's still being uh, in the accusative case here. So we have er sprengt und frisst ihn, which is, of course, the accusative form for a masculine noun such as shoe. Jetzt ist Max sauber und glücklich. Uh, now Max is uh, clean and happy. He, which is always in German, as I've said many times now, er... Er ist bestimmt ein guter Hund. He is a good dog. Uh, aber Max sieht, aber dann ma sieht Max, uh, my Katze. Katze is a feminine noun. It says so in parentheses there. And so we have to use here a feminine form of mine, which, in case you are unaware, is meine, meine Katze. She is called Carla, so she heist Carla, and of course she is the subject of the sentence, that makes she nominative. Uh, we use Z for that in German, so Z heist Carla. She is called Carla. Diese Situation ist nicht gut. The situation is not good. Carla hat Angst vor Max. Carla is afraid of Max. Und uh, she läuft weg. And she runs away. So in this case, we have she, which is, uh, of course, in German, still Z. Doesn't change uh, from the other four million times I've said that during this stream. But Z läuft weg. She walks away. Ich kann her, uh, ich kann her nicht finden. I cannot, see, uh, I cannot find her. Her, in this case, is still feminine. So in German, even if it's accusative, like this sentence is, we still use Z. I can't find her. Wo ist she? Where is she? She in German is still Z. Wo ist sie? Where is she? Ich rufe Carla. I call Carla. Wo bist you? Bist is the do form of the sentence, which means that we of course have to use do. Wo bist du? Where are you? Dann sieht Carla, then sees Carla me. Me in German in the accusative case is mich, and so we use here mich. This mich is uh, the accusative case because Carla is the one that is seeing something, and the something she is seeing is me. So, sie sieht mich. Carla sieht mich. Und she comes, uh, sie kommt zurück. She in German is still sie, so sie kommt zurück. Ich gebe Max einen Knochen. Einen Knochen, because it's a masculine noun, and so of course we have to use here einen in the accusative case because... I am the one giving something. The something I am giving is that direct object, einen Knochen. Ich gebe Carla etwas Milch. I give Carla some milk. Bald sehe ich them zusammen auf meinem Bett. Them in German is still Z, as it was in previous sentences. This doesn't change between nominative and accusative, so we don't really have to worry about it too much there. I see them on my bed. They, in German, is Z still, and that means that in this sentence we still use Z. Z schlafen und sind zufrieden. They sleep and are satisfied. Hänsel und Gretel. Here we have Hänsel and Gretel, which of course is the story of the uh, two children who get stuck out into the forest by their parents and then you know, they kill a witch by burning her in an oven. So, you know, good times. 
Hänsel und Gretel gehen durch the Wald. Wald is a forest and it says in parentheses that it is a masculine noun, so we of course use the masculine form for the, which in German is der. But because we have this preposition durch, durch being an accusative preposition, which uh, my students will learn about next chapter, uh, that is den Wald in the accusative. What happened to all of the answers for that? Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, I guess you guys are just going to have to listen really well, because uh, I don't apparently have all of the answers for this particular part of the uh, the worksheet, so it's just that. Um, so the first one should be einen, uh, no, durch den Wald. Den Wald. Uh, Sie sehen a house. A in German is ein, and it uh, doesn't change in the accusative case for neuter nouns, so we have here ein. Then we have the again, sie fangen an das Haus zu, se uh, zu essen, they start eating the house, that's das Haus, so more of that. All right, then we can go on to the next part of it where it has a uh, conversation between Hänsel und Gretel and eventually uh, there is a couple of lines in there from the Hexa, the witch. So first up, ich habe Hunger, I have hunger, or I'm hungry, ich auch. I too, or me too. Uh, a witch, which a witch is feminine, of course, so that's uh, A is feminine. That has to mean then it is eine. Eine Hexe macht die Tür auf. A witch makes the door uh, makes the door open, or in other words, she opens the door. Uh, guten Tag, my children. My in German is mine, but then we have to worry about the ending. Kinder is, of course, plural, so the uh, ending that goes on that is an E. Meine Kinder. Hello, my children. Was macht y'all here? Y'all in this sentence has to be the ear form, because you can tell that by the uh, ending on the verb. Ihr. So, was macht ihr hier? What are you doing here? Wir haben Hunger. We are hungry. Wo sind your parents? Your parents in German is uh, your. We're referring back to the ear form, so that means that it's y'all's parents, which in German is euer. This uh, euer is, of course, uh, going to have an e at the end of it to make sure that it goes with the uh, Eltern, which are plural, so eure Eltern. Our in German is unser. Since Eltern is still plural, we use here the E at the end, unsere Eltern. Unsere Eltern haben us nicht gern. Us in German is always uns, so that's not going to change any. That's still uns. Unsere Eltern haben uns nicht gern. Our parents don't like us. That's uh, probably true for most of you now, since you're all... For those of you who are paying attention to the command form stuff that we did earlier in this chapter, Komm is actually the incorrect form here because we are addressing both Hänsel und Gretel, and therefore we should be using kommt ins Haus. But uh, I didn't make this worksheet, so I can't correct that. Ich habe etwas für y'all. I have something for you. Für is, of course, an accusative preposition, which you'll learn about in, Germ uh, in the next chapter in German 1. Uh, but that is euch for the accusative form there for y'all. Etwas für us in the accusative case. It even tells you it's accusative and it says uh, in the parentheses us, so für uns, which is uns. Etwas zu essen, something to eat. And then we have our hero. Uh, our in German is unser. Uh, and then we have to add an ending to the end of it to make it in the feminine form, so unsra in German, unsere Hel uh, Helden, our heroine. And the last line, Hänsel und Gretel gehen in das Haus, Hänsel and Gretel go into the house, die Hexe ist glücklich, the uh, witch is happy, sie hat jetzt her Mittagessen. Mittagessen being a neuter noun, we use here ihr. Yeah, my students seem to be complaining that uh, the part of this uh, packet is not there, so if you're wondering where I'm getting all of these things, there's a link in the description where you can download your own version of this worksheet, uh, so you can find the version that I'm actually using here. Uh, for whatever reason, whenever I tried to uh, do part of this from 
uh, Nancy Tuline's website. It uh, formatted it weird. We did last chapter in German 1, but we're going to do it again because we need to. So here's a little bit of uh, review stuff. First up, die Nachbarin blank meine Telefonnummer nicht. The uh, neighbor doesn't know my telephone number. Uh, telephone numbers is one of the weird things that uses wissen, and die Nachbarin is the ERZS form of the verb, so we're going to use, uh, that should be Weiss. <laughs> die Nachbarin weiß meine Telefonnummer nicht. Apparently I thought that that was the plural form, uh, but it is not. It should be Weiss, not wissen. So, whoops, Herr Antrim loses points for that one. Ich blank die Stadt Hamburg gut. I know the city of Hamburg well. And you're going to use here kenne, because that's the uh, ich form of the verb. And if you know a city or you're acquainted with a city, that of course is kenne. Blank du wann er kommt. Do you know when he is coming? Uh, wann er kommt is uh, a fact, and therefore we use here uh, the form of wissen. This one has to go with the du form, and so we use weist. Weist du wann er kommt. Do you know when he is coming? Nummer vier. Blank ihr, wo die Bibliothek ist. Do you know where the uh, library is? Uh, where the library is is the fact that we know, and so we, of course, you have to, have to use here wissen again. The ear form of wissen is wisst. So, wisst ihr, wo die Bibliothek ist? Do you know where the library is? Sabina und Marlena, blank die Adresse von Frau Sperber. Sperber? Okay. So, uh, this one here we have Sabina und Marlina. Uh, these two are plural. Die Adresse is another one that is the, uh, the weird uh, exception to the rule. Uh, even though it's just a noun, we still use wissen here because uh, it's an address. So, sie wissen, they know. Blank du die Kinder. Do you know the children there? Du is, of course, the subject of the sentence, so we're using the du form of the verb. This uh, particular one says, do you know the children? The children being a noun, we have to use kennst. Kennst du die Kinder da? Do you know the children there? Und blank du wie sie heißen? And do you know how they are called, or do you know what their names are? The, the names of these children are, of course, the fact, and therefore we have to use a form of wissen. This form of wissen that goes with du is weist. Du weist. Weist du wie sie heißen. Do you know what their names are? Mein Freund blank den Professor. My friend, verb, the professor. My friend knows the professor. So here we have the professor being our object. That means that we're using a form of kennen. And so we use my friend kennt den Professor. Mein Freund kennt den Professor. Next up, the ear form. Uh, we have ihr blank bestimmt die neue, uh, die neunten Sinfonie von Beethoven. You all probably know the uh, ninth symphony from Beethoven. So of course this one is kennt for the ear form of the verb kennen, and we're using kennen because with this uh, symphony is the thing that we know. Endlich weiß ich die richtige Antwort. Finally, I know the correct answer. Uh, weiß is, of course, the form that we need here because Antwort is also on that list of things that just uh, happens to have uh, Wissen with it for no apparent reason. So, ich weiß die richtige Antwort. I know the real answer, or the correct answer. Seinen Sohn blank die, uh, die Leute gut. Seinen Sohn is in the accusative case. Uh, you can tell that with the en that's at the end of it. So we have here um, the the they form, which is die Leute, uh, because that's our subject here in that sentence. Seinen Sohn kennen die Leute gut. The people know his son well. So that one is, of course, kennen for the last one on our list. All right, we made it through the entire live stream. Congratulations, woohoo, go you. Thank you, Lucas, for the many, many super chats because uh, I appreciate the extra $6 that you gave me there, uh, but I really don't need your, uh, your money, but thank you all the same. Um, and thank you all for hanging out with me for a little while on this live stream. And uh, I will see you more than likely tomorrow uh, around the same time, hopefully. Um, 
actually no uh tomorrow i will probably be out of town actually but uh i will try and do another one of these live streams and explain the uh stem changing verbs but uh until then that is all for today danke fürs zuschauen bis zum nächsten mal tschüss